Hello everyone and welcome to MIT Designering Series, a weekly podcast where we feature leading professionals from the domains of design, technology, business and innovation. We talk to them about their experience, views on the latest industry trends, designering and a lot more. You can connect with us on our Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook and Twitter handles to get regular updates regarding our new episodes. And without further ado, let's start with your show. The apparel industry is heavily regulated by constantly evolving consumer trends and the socio-economic changes taking place in the markets. With a multi-channel environment keeping in sync with the new trends and catering to the needs of a broad spectrum of consumers can be a daunting task. Therefore, balancing the varied sets of users is crucial and understanding their latent needs to deliver innovative products is important. So how can designers strike balance between the existing and the new set of customers? To learn more about this concept and many more related topics, we bring you someone with over two decades of experience in the Indian apparel industry and currently working as Chief Product Officer at Raymond Apparel Limited. Atul Apte is a fashion design professional with expertise in building design collections and strong fashion concepts in men's and women's wear, along with a strong knowledge of innovative salote and fabric. He has vast knowledge about integrating technical, commercial and design aspects to develop commercially viable design collections. And that's why... On our journey of discovering designering, we talk to him about designing for dynamic demands. Hey Atul, welcome to MIT Designering Series. It's an honor and pleasure to host you on our show today. And let's get kick-started with an icebreaker question. Atul, it's not comfortable being a designer. Much of the time, we would be on our screens which inevitably raises the R's on the screen. When we are not educated or prepared for it, a lot of people do not understand how stressful this can be. The question that I have for you there is, what are some of the precautions that can be taken by designers to maintain their physical as well as mental health? Yes, it's extremely important for designers to maintain their physical as well as mental health. The new normal is here and uh, the way most professionals have adapted to this new way of working, which was earlier not even in existence, designers have also got impacted by this new way of working to a great extent. My point of view, any design person or for that any creative person, you know, does not like to be restricted to four walls and want to see, explore, go out, meet people, converse or draw inspiration to satisfy their creative urge. They get inspired by seeing some new things, new surroundings, and involving themselves in the environment. Be close to nature, get inspired by colors of nature. But needless to say, the digital way of being is going to be here. So we look forward for a well-balanced indoor and outdoor sessions. That will certainly help to maintain the physical mental health. If indoors uh, and uh, long hours on screen, while maintaining the so, uh, the safety protocols, you can follow a 20-20-20 rule. Every 20 minutes, shift the eyes to look at an object at least 20 feet away or for at least 20 seconds. This helps your eyes to get relaxed or uh, when you are indoors you can indulge in the some DIY projects or uh, taking up your hobbies that will definitely bring mental wellness <laughs> wow indeed well said atul and from the icebreaker question let's move to your journey you've been designing and implementing a seasonal fashion series. 
for contemporary retail for the most respected brand in the clothing industry for more than two decades. We would love to hear about your professional journey. How has all these years worked for you? Okay, uh, let me take you all back to 30 years and about my journey. I come from a town called Devas, which is in Madhya Pradesh. Right from beginning, I was always fascinated by arts and crafts and textiles. So I got enrolled in textile branch, which I studied for almost three years and took up a job in a textile mill in a very hard core textile environment and I worked there almost for two and a half years. But something as was always at the back of my mind to do something different. So I started preparing myself for a completely new stream at that time, which was fashion design and uh, for the best college in India, NIFT. So I worked hard to get through and got in the field of fashion design way back in 1992. But frankly, to admit, I felt completely out of place for, for six months as I was from a non-metro and it was a big challenge when you come from a small town. But I learned a lot there and uh, those two years were golden years for me and I had a fantastic set of friends and mentors and teachers who were also super talented. My exposure to CAD design was very early and I happened to work for a design studio in Delhi which had design bureau services and were also selling CAD systems. This was something slightly different from a design perspective. Also, there was spurt in the domestic retail companies. And uh, you could see a lot of homegrown retail brands coming up in mid-90s. So I got an, I got a fantastic opportunity which came by May for an Indo-Italian venture where the Italians were looking for someone who had design background and have also worked on CAT systems for their other pattern making and other pattern management services. I was fortunate enough to get selected as one of the youngest in the core team for this Indo-Italian venture and spent more than six months in a most advanced Italian manufacturing division called Marzotto. This was the turning point of my career where I have been, I have seen the most of the finest clothing or fashion and its manufacturing. So being a designer, I had dedicated myself to work on the nuances of tailored clothing and its manufacturing. This absolutely gave me confidence to foray into specialized category, which was not explored by many at that time. So I worked there almost for six years on hardcore cat pattern making and grading of patterns and was responsible for the complete product development. Raymond was obvious choice and my journey started here in 2002 and was holding a portfolio of ready-mates. Raymond has one of the finest skill set of manufacturing, so which was the biggest advantage for me and I simply used my skills in the early years to combine best of fashion trends and aesthetics and fit variations and uh, launched concept of seasonal collections for the retailers. I continued to stabilize, modernize and sharpen the product lines and collections for multi-channel environment and bring unique propositions like new colors, innovations in the ready-to-wear brand. Raymond uh, primarily is a fabric company and never had ready-mades in its portfolio for quite some time. So there was a need to introduce Raymond ready to wear product line. So I was ready to take that challenge and was given the task to shape up the brand, the ready made avatar of Raymond ready to wear. Raymond has got a very unique proposition with bridge to luxury elements. 
so as a design head i was responsible to create the handwriting for the brand and introduce contemporary fashion for modern retail with excel with a uh, excellent exposure in the field of retail merchandise buying and uh, other aspects of retail i got a uh, i got to create a unique product proposition for the organization i was always fascinated by the tailored and bespoke tailored clothing so i recently got a chance also to get a hands on experience in uh bespoke tailoring and learn from the scratch this art I was lucky enough to spend more than three months at one of the most reputed uh, bespoke tailoring uh, house, Morris Sidwell at Savile Row, London, where I could learn the nuances of handcrafted tailoring. So all these exposures in various fields definitely helped me to shape up my career. right from textiles to apparels to bespoke tailoring and i think i am able to create some value for the organization here hey that's really inspiring also you've been instrumental in changing park avenue which provides a full wardrobe dressing solution to a whole new youthful and fashionable lifestyle brand the question that i wish to ask you atul is what were some of the challenges you have encountered since repositioning the brand to cater to a different group of users altogether park avenue is one of the original homegrown men's western wear brand having completed more than two decades so there are always challenges to make brand contemporary or relevant for today's consumer if you ask any 40 plus consumer about the formal clothing or suits they will always talk about rayman either it is stitched or maybe it was actually bought from the rayman store so this was the strength as well as an opportunity for us to create own identity for a brand like park avenue and convert into a full lifestyle brand if you are to convert into a lifestyle brand you need to be relevant to today's consumer so being a core formal in the early years for many uh, large format stores and multi brand outlets which had uh, who had tagged us in uh, strict formal zones this was deterrent to the brand growth so it was important for us to introduce new set of product lines and shift from a suit or a jacket centric brand to a lifestyle brand and uh, this required actually a whole set of new product lines to be introduced a uh, softer product lines like shirts trousers and uh, polos or for that matter even the casual line or fashionable formals for that matter to compete with all the brands there was always resistance to accept the new slimmer silhouettes or the new fits in this multi channel environment but we saw in the year 2000 which was a most remarkable year where we had a lot of it professionals and new professions coming up and entrepreneurs you know uh who who were there so being old fashion would have been disastrous for us if you maintained the strict formal code we had a decent consumer base and its users spanned from uh, bankers to businessmen to music teachers or an artist also for that matter so the challenge was enormous and make it continue to make it very youthful stylish and most important thing to make it innovative so we had to introduce a set of product lines which were relevant for the consumer and more innovative 
from uh, functional as well as uh, from uh, so the challenge was to make it youthful stylish and most important bring innovative product clients to break the clutter customers do have different body types and you have to cater to them you know uh, the new set of customers definitely are more health conscious they need trendy designs styles and uh, there were also marriage customers so it was important for us to continue to balance this need and all in a one brand with the brand handwriting or the brand salience there is a fast changing consumer taste and to maintain relevance we had to get into the exclusive offering and the look based collections which provided actually ready to wear solutions for the consumer wow that's indeed inspiring and i'm sure it must have been quite an exciting journey quite a learning full experience out there atul and while we've been talking about this let's talk about your organization that you are associated with raymonds a market leader in shirting materials over the years raymond has been favored option for top design houses with over 1000 exclusive shops spread across 400 cities and an extensive network of over 20000 retailers in india wow can you tell us about the work culture of the company especially the design team how does it really work You are absolutely right. You know, Raymond has been a favored option for most of us. Raymond has been leader for a long time in the worsted suitings, but over the years, Raymond has transformed into a very successful lifestyle company. Raymond is a company has got state of the art manufacturing setup and uh, has got a portfolio of successful brands. which are all home grown over the years raymond has built trust in consumer's mind and raymond stands for trust excellence and quality so these attributes are not only for the products but across all the verticals or functions whether it is a manufacturing or the retail environment the raymond work culture is extremely collaborative and team oriented it's like a family where employees are taken good care and all employees are extremely proud to work for him it has got a interesting mix of old and new school thoughts and uh, there are now increasingly new platforms introduced for the career growth of an employee either through workshops to seminars to through classroom teachings and finally a leadership academy where the talent is nurtured uh, and mentored the talent pool is mentored here for the future leadership roles raymond is also it's a very dynamic company looking at the current uh, situation and is on the cusp of a major digital transformation how do we see raymond is basically now to become a fashion first organization in this domestic retail scenario hey did you know raymond introduced vera safe a high performance anti viral fabric this comprehensive collection is designed for everyday usage by business service and medical personnel this is a testament to their product innovation and the trust they have earned in developing safe fabric and textiles over the years wow this is really interesting uh, atul in fact while you've been talking about raymond one of the questions that comes to my mind is managing a legacy brand is an exciting challenge it's like a two way sword um one has to maintain the legacy and keep serving the loyal customers as well as innovate to address the changing trends and new customers also on the horizon what i wish to know from you atul is how does designer strike balance between both these worlds the existing set of customers the new customers 
who are also up there. You are absolutely right. You know, uh, when uh, you have to maintain a legacy brand, but also uh, look at new set of consumers who are walking in. So how does a designer strike a balance? Uh, while uh, designing a collection, it is important for designers or the product teams to work on the range architecture. You know, you may call it a merchandise pyramid or uh, you have to keep in mind some key elements which may, as we progress and we'll talk about it. But while building a collection, it's important that we need to bifurcate the collections into very classics or core pieces or look at fashion or fashion plus pieces or these segments. But most important is that, you know, I always encourage designers to speak to the consumers directly, whether it is loyal or a new consumer. Because there will be always a real need and latent need or any functional need, which sometimes consumers can't explain properly. Designers have to really think through these needs and uh, provide the solution. It's very important for uh, designers to listen to consumer and take inference out of it, you know. Of course, while designing the collection, they have to maintain the brand salience. The brand handwriting is going to be absolutely important and it has to reflect in each piece you design. Some of the key elements which every customer will pay attention would be comfort, color and craftsmanship. In fact, loyal consumers or loyal customers do not shy away from buying fashion pieces. So, to maintain a balance between old and new, it's all about communicating with consumers more and more understand their latent or uh, real needs and then create a collection which is suitable for them. Interesting. That's quite a unique outlook in terms of how you've been doing. And and while we've been talking about that, Atul, for designers, especially fashion designers, keeping in sync with the trends is very important. What I wish to know from you is what are the channels to identify these broad trends which impact the industry and future growth? Where do you understand that? Where is the trend moving and what is going to be in sync and what is it that people are going to love? I, I, I would really like to get in depth of that. When we have to apply uh, the framework of design strategy to ensure that the user needs are prioritized, we need to look at the design thinking elements you know and put in the process of explore create and execution because while we explore which gives us a broad framework or a deep understanding of real users so in this process the designers need to go out in the field and look around and meet the real users to identify the real or latent needs while uh, creation or execution it's all about bringing that learning back on the table and implement also identify the usage pattern which is derived out of this research take out the inference and then for execution get into the multiple phases of prototyping to get the right product so it will be important for designers to be in continuously in touch with the consumers and identify the broad trends Apart from that, uh, the socio-economic changes around us and globally will also give you a broad understanding of uh, varying habits of the consumer and also about the trends. Recently, in the pre- and post-pandemic situation, we have seen that the trend or the consumption pattern has changed a lot, which we already spoken about it earlier. Some... Uh, Channels like uh, the forecasting agencies, like the textile and the color forecasting agencies. It's really important for designers to actually uh, get into understanding of these trends as both textile and color forecasting agencies are much ahead of season to determine the colors or the innovation in fiber yarn or structure 
which fashion designer can definitely refer to some key examples if you have to relate to it would be you know earlier the love for environment love for nature which has got actually the sustainability as a trend in the limelight the brighter color palette in the coming season clearly represents the bright future and uh, the trend of green tones represents the love for nature or the environment so apart from the reference materials like going to the trend fairs or fashion fairs the most important would be able to identify the consumption pattern as well as the future consumers and their lifestyle hey that's really exciting and insightful i i never saw it from that point of view and and, and really didn't know about it one of the other things atul that i'm really interested in is about sustainability i mean it's a rising concern of brands equipment and fabric manufacturers and consumers at the same time all the stakeholders there's been a greater push for water saving durability and waste management as well as reduced emissions and carbon footprints as well what i wish to know from you atul is how can we integrate sustainable practices at all levels of the design and development phase yes sustainability is going to be the future and will become a way of life and it is a rising concern of brands there is no doubt about it as creators designers will play extremely important role and will bring sustainable practices in the early stage of product development this pandemic in fact has brought sustainability in sharp focus in various organizations and uh, it is also around us that lot of discussions and actions are now on looking at the over consumptions and on uh, conservation of natural resources as you all know textile and apparel industry is one of the most polluted industry and is responsible for waste they produce and uh, and it consumes large amount of water and energy in processing the whole fabrics or garments this is actually creating a big impact on environment so right from conceptualization or at early inception of product development designers will be carefully looking at every stage of this process designers need to continuously demand and decode the product development process and involve themselves right from raw material selection to manufacturing of the final product and when it goes to the uh, when it goes on the shelf how it is getting communicated is it really touching the heart of millions of consumers a careful selection of raw material materials at an early stage right from fiber yarn or ethically grown natural fibers yarns from recycled repurposed materials which have to be converted into fabrics or which require less water for coloring or dyeing are they eco friendly they need to continuously look for fabrics which has been produced with less water and there is uh, less conservation of energy fabrics which have been given special finishes which requires less maintenance and falls into easy easy care categories and does not require frequent washing ironing so thus in some way or the other you are creating a sustainable product also look at the product which is made in the manufacturing plants or units which give importance to fair labor practices or which takes care of their living and working conditions units which pay attention to the conservation of natural resources and uh, follow fair practices of waste management waste management and recycling actually then it creates a very interesting uh, sustainable story finally when it goes on the shelf designers need to look at the important element the appeal of the final product sometimes the less is more you know i'm talking about a lot of labels tags which are put on the garments do you really require so many to communicate 
so are they made from the biodegradable materials or recyclable materials so it's a whole life cycle of the product where the sustainable practices have to be uh, uh, brought in and then designers will play a very important role here right from concept and for the final deliverance of the product that is indeed a very interesting way of looking at the entire problem atul quite quite interesting atul indian apparel industry is giving new opportunities to new businesses as well and and there's so many new exciting things that you see especially on instagrams but it is important to understand the dynamics of fashion consumption and the business around it as well what i would like you to share is how can designers utilize the values personality and consumption tendencies of the consumers to amplify their fashion businesses few important aspects uh, designers need to continuously be vigilant about is the socio economic changes uh, happening around them and in the global setup these changes impact the lifestyle of consumers and their buying habits and the consumption pattern and then a lot of inferences can be taken from these trends so being in touch with consumer whether primary or secondary on a regular basis is extremely important as early trends can be established from here i would also like to relate this question to the recent pandemic situation where most of us were constrained in four walls for almost a year and most of the businesses were conduct online or through virtual connect it has changed lifestyle for most of us and we are happy to conduct our meetings in relaxed or leisure clothing so this new lifestyle gave an opportunity to look for new categories alternative businesses and in that period for that duration so most of the businesses had introduced the concept of work from home which was never there earlier and business was as usual for many who decided to be there in that category for uh, for that duration and uh, followed this trend and captured this opportunity there was a surge in casual and relaxed clothing also in a wear hygiene wear intimate wear so personal care and grooming as a new opportunity for most of the businesses and the businesses have grown steadily in these years we as a company had to quickly adopt this change and we had to focus onto this new category and we have seen some very interesting positive results here as most of the businesses were conducted online the whole focus shifted to the online business or creating an experience on online or digitally and create a special merchandise units for these channels and they have also shown positive results there so adopting to digital way of life and reaching out to consumers was a new way of selling so designers need to continuously study the lifestyle of consumers and factors impacting their wearing habits which gives it an opportunity to explore if you look at indian festivities which is something uh which is something you know uh, where most of the purchases happen and the consumptions of the same is maximum during this festivity during marriage season so recently occasion wear in the new avatar is getting prominence and is getting attention as a new business opportunity and uh, earlier also i have mentioned about the urban influences the pandemic period which had completely changed the way we think and act so we have uh, most of the companies had recalibrated themselves to the new business models 
so it's important for designers to keep track of the current trends the socio economic changes and the global setup so how it's impacting the consumption patterns and do they really find some opportunity for the new product lines or collections or the new innovative products it will be always good to be in touch with the consumer and their consumption patterns hey did you know park avenue has won the retailer of the year fashion and lifestyle award at the asia retail congress they were acknowledged for their fast development including 257 exclusive brand outlets 3300 multi brand outlets and 800 large format stores across all channels in india wow that is insightful uh, i didn't look at it at all honestly this way and this sounds really really uh, interesting i'm sure those entrepreneurs who been listening to our podcast especially those uh, small enterprises boutiques uh, fashion designers there's so much to learn from what what you just shared with us and moving on atul urban language is a new fashion but timeless fashion is also growing trend when it comes to rethinking the business model and merchandising we've seen a lot of blends where luxury companies collaborate with gen z fashion styles to redefine the timeless neutral design in fact we just recently saw where a very large famous uh, fashion designer collaborated with with another uh, modern brand and um, uh, and 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 the interesting thing that also followed um, uh, all all of that launch on the social media as well the question that i have for you atul is what is the future of these collaborations and how does it affect the business of the companies we spoke about managing a legacy brand and uh, the new set of consumers how do a designer strike a balance between these two worlds we all know urban language is, is the new fashion and uh, as you move forward i think we have to be more relevant to the new set of consumers the pandemic period as everybody knows has completely changed the way we think and act most of the companies have to recalibrate and rethink their business models india being a very young country and uh, we see a lot of these urban influences you know which is there to impact on the product lines or the product innovations what you do so collaboration is the key and future for almost all the brands with these new set of consumers because we have both set of consumers uh, one who look for exclusive luxurious and personalized merchandise while a set of gen z kids consumers who are extremely trendy and uh, always look for something new both are here to stay but how we bring a twist in the classics or core and make it relevant for the new set of consumers will be something to watch for to survive we have to address to do the new set of consumers because uh, gen z will bring a lot of new opportunities for us in the business and uh, if you uh, uh, enroll them pretty early you know the, the adoption of the brand is also quite early and the new products or the new set of uh, opportunities can be explored which are relevant for gen z sometimes the extreme fashion fads which are there maybe are short lived but it creates a trend and makes an impact on the consumers and how do we translate these fashion fads keeping in mind the brand resilience will be one of the most important tasks for the designers and the product teams this set of consumers bring a lot of freshness in the product line in fact uh, now most of the brands organizations have a consumer chair you know which also helps in deciding the product lines or the trends and it has seen a higher success rate the consumer insights are always helpful to the designer and it gives both real and latent need a small hint can translate into a big idea and uh, which can be scalable 
as a single consumer is going to represent a large set of consumers uh gen z are actually also digitally native you know they have been exposed to internet social network and uh, mobile applications so it is important for companies to be very relevant and connected to them as we move to the post pandemic the digital rendition of the brand is also changing very fast and uh, gen z set of consumers actually brings lot of influence on people of all ages they value uh, the individual expression and very much concerned about the planet and do uh, and want to improve the, the world you know and these communities are created by causes and interest and not by the economic background so it will it will be very important for an organization to be equipped with all this uh, digital technology and uh, products which are relevant so that they can deliver value to the consumers extremely important for business to listen to gen z set of consumers very carefully because the disruption in the business which is happening which is at a very fast pace they love to experiment they are open to ideas you know as an example of previous generation they are, they will look for the best material best craftsmanship which may have impressed them earlier but now the gen z wants to know what is in there they create uh, high expectations for experiences and uh, very strong focus on the personal branding so it is important for all the brands and organizations to be more relevant and collaborate with the set of new set of consumers now great the other element atul that i also want to know from you is designers are now working closely with scientists and garment technologists to develop innovative sustainable and wearable fashion from using nanotechnology and embedding electronic equipment in fabrics to using recycled material and fabrics with medicinal and healing values wow this this so much innovation happening in just about a shirt t-shirt or a garment that you are wearing the question that i have for you atul is how can we reshape the fashion industry using science as a part of the evolution science and its innovation has always been a boon for mankind getting early on the board helps to connect the dots and identify the need gap from consumers perspective innovation is also the outcome of addressing any functional need of consumers which is derived out of day to day experience with the fast changing lifestyle and with the usage science and technology you can deep dive into the experimentation of uh, various materials which are unknown to the mankind so i see a great potential if designers collaborate and talk to each other frequently as many times when uh, designers and inventors sit together they can unleash the potential of the product which is in the making or even at the conceptual stage clothes will act as a second skin in future uh, which is well equipped with technology and we see that uh, wellness performance and sustainability will be the future of apparel so it's important how designers can col- designers can collaborate for the future growth well said atul and moving on to another interesting blend atul the world of technology in fact the adoption of virtual technology artificial intelligence and data analytics has led to more efficient and streamlined business management transforming the fashion industry itself what i wish to know from you what are the other ways in which technology is disrupting the fashion industry how can we use these technologies to provide the next level of tailored experience to the customers we earlier spoke about uh, the personalized experience you know for both primary and secondary set of consumers customers so in this fast changing lifestyle customers are looking for ready made solutions and with the advent of uh, virtual technology 
AI, data analytics, we can definitely get ready-made solutions across areas of styling, presentation of products, cost management, and of course, for quick decision-making. In the current and future scenario, both offline and online experiences will coexist as it will be difficult to eliminate certain experience like uh, touch and feel of cloth or any material. So there will be human connect which will be existing. The new techniques and design packages will allow designers to cut drastically, cut down the sampling costs and visualize the garment in a much better way using maybe the high resolution 3D mapping techniques and then create new avatars for consumers. In fact, designers and product teams, when they adopt this high-end technology, they can reduce the cost of prototyping to a great extent for their large product collection. Now, these high-tech 3D rendering, these images can be shared with consumers or the primary customers for better visual experiences and also for quick decision making. We also have now the personal design assist service, you know, which will help customer to navigate in the retail environment by simply scanning the details of the garment and put it in the cart virtually and then create an ensemble of their choice. While the selection process is happening, the garments can go back into the room and are put together to create an ensemble or interesting combinations, you know. Many times, uh, consumers are not aware what they want and have a very faint idea with tailored solutions. So it makes life easy for decision making and this this actually converts into sales. Lot of computer-aided packages now where we have a 3D draping, virtual and realistic models are on the ramp. is another big trend which, in, which is catching up. This simply allows brands to uh, get maximum reach and uh, now most of the roadshows in fact are now happening virtually. So all the primary customers are getting used to it and thus the lead times are getting cut drastically. Virtual store tours is of great help which is fast catching up for customers to make decisions very very fast. Customers also now have ease of ordering from portal and picking up from the nearest store or alternatively it can be delivered from anywhere. The virtual streaming of any e-commerce store or a store which has digitally uh, adopted. We have seen a big trend recently where some big brands have made fantastic sales. You know where the team sitting in HO can direct and plan very interesting visual merchandise and product promotions on the fast and slow movers and then provide solutions for the navigation in the store. Data analytics is the next big thing and all the product attributes really help to decide on the next set of collections for designers. What are the regional preferences of consumers? What sort of products are fast moving and what are the trends? So use of data analytics for designers and product teams is extremely important to map the consumer buying habits and to make decisions. These sort of decisions definitely have seen higher success rates. Wow, this is such an exciting conversation, uh, Atul. I wish we could keep continuing, but due to paucity of time, it brings me to my last question for you. At a mighty group of institutions, we follow a philosophy called as designering a special mix of design and engineering. What I wish to know from you is, do you think these concepts could be weaved together and help young designers create something outstanding and different? I really like the concept of designering, where it is a mix of design and engineering. When you put exploration or creation and mix it with the defined processes and precision as in engineering, and uh, with collaborative and teamwork, the results would be definitely outstanding. In order to find solutions to the problem, a systematic approach and defined processes will certainly help organization to grow 
multifold. Thank you. Thank you, Atul, so much for validating our philosophy and joining us on our show. There's so much insightful knowledge that you've shared, and I'm sure our audience is going to love this. Our listeners are going to enjoy this thoroughly. Thank you so much, Atul, for joining us on MIT Designering Series. Hello, Amir. Welcome again to our Startup of the Month series. So, Amir, let's get into conversation about certain case studies, certain customers that you've served and the solutions that you've built for them. I'll begin with the first project, which was done for JW Marriott Pune. Marriott team approached us regarding redesigning of their JW food truck. The existing design was very random and it wasn't getting a good response. We visited the truck, which was there in their premises next to Pune Baking Company. We noticed the first problem was that it was getting hidden from the surrounding. Visitors were not giving attention to the existing truck. So we decided to change the whole color palette and theme which will complement the ambience. But also it will grab visitors attention. We worked on character designs based on the type of people who visits the hotel which targets different age groups. The turquoise color scheme was finalized considering the ambience and the freshness. We worked on a final composition with series of illustration along with Marriott building in the background as per the client's requirement. The newly designed food truck is now more clean and fresh. We also incorporated the same theme in their promotional holding and menu card designs. The new JW food truck is now catching visitors attention and adding more value to their premises. The second project I would like to mention is about brand environment design. Surveys restaurant Pune approached us to work with their interior team for the upcoming branch in camp. We visited the site and went through all the designs they have finalized. After some research, we decided few areas where we can incorporate some brand elements which will be engaging and add brand values. Since it's a Maharashtrian restaurant and highly keen on its homemade spices and traditional ways of cooking the food. We incorporated few techniques which include calligraphy, wall art, illustration and some 3D elements. Based on traditional equipment of hand grinding spices, we worked on handmade illustration on a huge wall which added the wow factor to the customers. We also incorporated some Sanskrit calligraphy about five senses which we use while eating the food became very engaging amongst the crowd. On one wall, illustrations on some famous local monuments added vibrancy and the importance about the location. In a brand environment design, color plays an important role. So we distributed the overall theme and brand colors based on each design area as per the importance of the sitting. The entire theme was designed thoughtfully and was adding more importance to each corner. Beautiful. A lot of interesting facts and the way um, Amir Khan Patan Studios actually landed up creating solutions for its customers. Brilliant and loads for everyone to look up to and learn from you. Thank you so much, Amir, for joining us on this conversation. Hey there, thank you for listening and we hope you enjoyed our show. Do write to us at mbs at the rate mit.edu.in. We look forward to your opinions, feedbacks and suggestions of speakers you would like us to host on this show. You can also connect with us on our Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook and Twitter handles to get regular updates regarding new episodes and speakers. Do tune in to our channel next Wednesday for a new story on your favorite audio streaming platforms.